Bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. So happy to be back yet again. I thank God for you tuning in. Brothers and sisters, this message is kind of like a follow-up to the initial message. I believe it was called, Keep uh, the Devil Out of Your Marriage Bed. If you hadn't checked that out, check that one out first, and then check this one out. I believe that this will bless your life. I believe that it's very, very important because when we're talking about marriage, when we're talking about sex, particularly, we want to keep things holy. Okay, you can have a wonderful time with your spouse, but still keep things in perspective. Okay, we don't want to bring the world, we don't want to bring demonic forces or demons, okay, in your marriage bed or in your atmosphere, your room, in your uh, bedroom, your intimate uh, place with your spouse. Again, I'm talking about married couples out there. I'm not talking about people who are fornicating. I'm not talking about people who are in homosexual relationships or even quote unquote marriages. I'm not talking about people like that. I'm talking specifically to those married couples out there who really value marriage, who really are serious about growing with their spouse, growing old with their spouse and still keeping the flavor in your bedroom. There's nothing wrong with being intimate with your spouse. This is a beautiful thing. I'm all for it. Uh, and I have a very vibrant marriage. However, when it comes to getting out of control, particularly with fantasy. Now, when I'm talking about fantasy, I'm not talking about necessarily inviting uh, physically other people like a lot of people do swingers or a lot of people invite other people in the bed. I'm not talking about that. I'm not even talking about, you know, doing anything like having a pole in your room or anything like that. I'm talking about those fantasies. Okay. That your spouse is not even aware of. Oh man, I'm getting started now. I'm talking about those fantasies that can perhaps run through your mind while you are actually intimate with your spouse. I'm going to take my time with this message because I believe that more often than not, there's a lot of couples out there that are secretly living double lives. What are you talking about, Samantha? You know, I come home, I work hard, I'm, I'm, I'm with my spouse, I'm in a monogamous relationship, and you know, what, what, what you talking about? I'm talking about whether you be the male or female. I'm talking about you fantasizing about someone else other than your spouse while you are actually in the act of sexual intimacy. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about you thinking about a celebrity while you're actually. Oh, man. Somebody said, oh, I got busted. I heard that in the spirit. I heard somebody said, oh, she's on to me. Up. Oh. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, I had to talk to about this because you don't really think this, but you are actually committing adultery on your spouse. Oh, yeah. And it's high time. To say the end to that fantasy. It's high time to see the credits come up and say, you know what? I'm walking out of this fantasy. huh? Time is up. The jig is up. And I'm talking to females out there. I'm talking to males out there. I'm talking about the body of Christ that needs to clean its act up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why? Because you don't think there's anything wrong with it because you are year after year living this double life, dreaming and thinking and fantasizing. Listen, if the lights is off and you closing your eyes, all you doing is entering in another dimension. Once you are intimate with your spouse. Oh, yeah. See, they're thinking that you're thinking about them when all along you're thinking about Boris Kojo. Some of you ladies, Idris Alba. Come on, come on, come on. Some of you ladies thinking about Denzel in his 
younger years. <laughs> yeah, because he's looking kind of busted lately. <laughs> oh, listen, can I keep it real and raw? Some of you guys, Beyonce. Who else? Who, who's a very uh, attractive woman? Uh, I don't know. Uh, some of you uh, old timers, Abalonia. Come on now. Some of you real old timers. Marilyn Monroe. Do you realize that Marilyn Monroe was a Satanist? Do you realize that she was a whore? Do you realize that she was a nutball drug addict? Yeah, but you want to fantasize about Marilyn Monroe. I'm not talking about you young timers. I'm talking about you old cats out there. Pushing 60. Pushing 50. Whatever the case is. Whatever your fantasy is, married couples out there, you know who you fantasize about. I don't have to dig in the crates. You know who they are. Some of them could be dead. Some of them could be alive. The point of the matter is they are fantasies. And fantasies are what? They are not real. Uh-huh. They're not real. Just like an incubus and succubus dream. Hmm? that are not real, particularly tangible in the real world, the devil, see, this is how the devil gets in. The devil comes in with a sexual thought. And just like people who masturbate, what do they do? They fantasize. Yeah, yeah, they fantasize. They don't have to have the actual person there. They fantasize about these images. And what's the, what's the, what's the gateway? What's the doorway? These Social media outlets, these pornographic videos, imagery, fantasy, everything that's not literally tangible, but just comes in with just a mere thought. A music video that you may see, a commercial, something like an old movie or something like a person that you thinking about that was in your life 20, 30 years ago, and you just so happened to see them on Facebook, and they, for some reason, are also connected to something called Instagram. And you decide, while nobody's looking, to check them up and check them out. Then you're dreaming about them. Then when it's time to be intimate with your spouse, am I talking to anybody out there? Oh, it's repentance time. I'm getting real and raw. You decide. To bring them along in the bedroom while closing your eyes and making your spouse believe that you're actually excited about them. When all in all, only God and the devil and you know that you're actually having a demonic rendezvous with your demonic fantasy. It's high time to repent. Listen, hell is hot and it's filled with a lot of people who decided to year upon year upon year commit adultery in secret. I said in secret. They never repented about it. They never got set free. They never got delivered. They lived double lives. Year after year, your soul is being tormented. Your soul is being used. Your mind confused, your emotions abused. But no one knows, but little old you. Brothers and sisters, it's high time to get set free, don't you think? Now that you've heard this message, now that you realize how serious stuff like this is and the fact that God is not pleased with it now you know what not to do okay Samantha you know uh you're talking about me okay Samantha you're talking about me so what do I do now well I believe that what you need to do is you need to come clean I believe that you need to obviously Repent and tell God about it. Oh, yeah. And then I think that you need to share this video with your spouse so that you and your spouse can have some type of dialogue. Because I'm telling you, it just not maybe you. It may be you and her or him and you. 
that's having this type of rendezvous year after year. Listen, you wonder why. There's a lot of people in the marriages that just all of a sudden not really feeling each other. Huh? You wonder why year after year certain spouses have incubus and succubus demons infiltrating, huh? Like wildfire in their dreams. Listen, once you have sex with someone, which is your spouse, okay? And during the course of that intimacy, you're thinking about a celebrity, okay? Just say. And you actually have an orgasm and you, 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 you know, you know what I'm saying? Come on, let's grow up. Let's grow up just a little. Or she has an orgasm and she's thinking about that man. It, uh, can I, can I go there? Okay. It opens the door and gives legal rights to the incubus and succubus demons it just basically opens that door for them to torment your dream life. It gives them that opportunity. It gives them that access to torment your mind. And if you don't know what incubus and succubus demons are, I'm sure I have enough videos on it. Look it up, look it up. It's all about a fantasy, brothers and sisters. And until you realize that you are a participant in opening those doors. You're never going to get free. The only way that you're going to get free is you have to realize that that is a problem. And you have to come clean. You have to confess. Listen, I did this. I did that. Huh? And you know what I noticed? What I, what I do sometimes when the devil... Let me just, let me just put this out on the table. Because I don't want you to think you know just because people have incubus and succubus dreams that they're doing anything bad i, I want to really emphasize this because there's a lot of people who are living clean they are living for the lord they're living holy they're not fornicating they're not doing this they're not they're li literally living clean lives spiritually but they do get tormented by incubus and succubus dreams. Why do you think that Jesus Christ himself, he was physically doing the right thing by prayer and fasting and, you know, 40 days and 40 nights. He wasn't doing nothing. But, but the enemy tried him there. So just don't think just because, okay, what does the man say? I was holding it up. No, 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 no. You could be living a clean life and get incubus and succubus dreams. Case in point. Sometimes I have very rarely, very rarely though, the enemy tries out of the blue to maybe give me a lustful dream. And you know what I do? Obviously, I cast it down when I wake up and I plead the blood of Jesus against it and renounce it and everything else. But, but I tell my spouse about it. I say, honey, guess what? The devil tried to give me a dream about so-and-so. And you know what my husband does? He renounces it, casts it out, pleads the way. He, he wars against it too. Because he knows the devil is a liar. He knows the devil's schemes and scams. Huh? Listen, we have to realize that even in marriages, even in the strongest of marriages, the devil will try you. The devil will suggest things. The devil will set the stage up and circumstances and people and timing. I'm telling you, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. And as long as we are real and raw with not only God, but ourselves and our spouses, that's when we are truly a force to be reckoned with, a couple to be reckoned with. You have to include prayer in there. You have to be transparent and realize that Satan deals with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And until you master those things, you will always be meat for the slaughter. Bless the true and living God.